a bubble optic ruffled vase with a clear split foot and we'll be using the color aqua all right and so i guess without further ado thank you for being with us and here we go adieu adieu <laughs> well good morning and somebody's on here with us welcome aboard it's what we call a bubble optic vase with a foot on it and well hello len good to have you here everybody checking in here we go all righty so foster's got a piece of aqua colored glass on the end hodgepodge woodworks welcome aboard don't recognize that name okay okay so foster's going to work it and uh, pop a little bubble into it uh, but that's going to be a bubble you don't necessarily see that's going to be internal of the glass but we're actually going to work today on trapping bubbles so we'll show you a sample piece over here real quick and this is a bowl that has bubbles trapped within it brightness reflecting off there you can see a lot of the bubbles trapped in it and those are trapped in by using what we call a diamond optic mold sometimes called a pineapple mold and it's down here on the floor and it's got a lot of sharp points in it almost like rows of shark's teeth and then after Foster gets all the glass gathered up and shaped into the way he wants he'll put it in there and blow into that optic mold and then the little indentations created by those pins inside will trap air with the subsequent bubble. So, here we go. Right now he's going to blow and trap a bubble inside the aqua color just to inflate it a little bit. That uh, will not actually be seen. It will be the interior of the vessel. So that's what he's doing right now. He's going to let that cool off a little bit. When he gets that to the temperature that he wants to gather, to go gather a little bit of glass setting up the stool right now so he can get a good line on getting into that diamond mold. So, let's see, if you're not familiar with them, we'll try and pick one up here and give you a good view of the inside of this thing. It's a really interesting design. And this is the inside of the diamond mold. Try to get a little light shine down in there. And all of those diamond points that are cut in there create impressions or indentations into the glass. And that's what will trap the bubbles that we use. So while we're waiting on Foster and he's picking up his other gather and we happen to be here right beside our sign that's in the process of maybe one of these days igniting in the lower right corner. We have a charity event going on this month. It's just for the month of March. We call it the Maryland Cats. Their cats made with the colors of the state of Maryland, $60 each, 50% to charity. Shipping's free in the continental U.S. and international is a little extra. And we'll be donating to No Kid Hungry. So we want to get that mention in here real quick. Hello, Barbara. Good to see you. And Bridget. Yes, indeed. So Foster's gathered some clear glass over the color aqua he had, trapped a little bit of air into the pipe, and it's blown up now. He's going to marver this, shape it up a little bit. The marver is the metal table we use. Uh, in old days, they used to use marble or some kind of stone like that. He's checking to see how his fit's going to be. He wants to get this glass really, really hot so it'll almost drip down into that mold. And the trick in using this mold is don't get caught. It's not don't get caught using it, don't, don't get, get caught. caught in it. <laughs> well, no, it's, if you get stuck in it, you don't want to get caught. You don't want to be the one. Yeah, if you get stuck in the mold, you don't want everybody else to know it was you because somebody's got to clean that baby out. At any rate, you could see the diamond-shaped teeth in that mold. And those undercut sides, the part that would be underneath, actually catches the glass. So the glass blower drops the mold, drops the glass into the mold, blows really, really hard, throwing the glass out all around those points, then has to suck in gently and twist the pipe a little bit in order to free it from those diamond points. So that's the trick 
in using the diamond mold, and that is how sometimes we get stuck in them. And if it happens, then we just have to clean out the mold and we can use it again. So he's got a lot of heat in there. You see it drip right in. He puts it down in there. He'll blow really, really hard. And he'll jiggle the pipe a little bit and pull it out. And it's got the diamonds right in there. There we go. Beautiful. Let's hear it for Foster. Yay! Way to go, buddy. All right. So it's, it's pretty easy to if you're not paying close attention to get stuck, if you stay in a little too long, if the glass freezes up inside, and one really important element of it is to make sure that the bubble inside the glass extends toward the bottom of the piece. You can see the color reaching almost the tip of the piece there, and that's because he had that bubble pushed all the way down there. Without that, he'd have a solid mass of glass in the bottom, and it would probably get stuck. So now he's letting that cool a little bit. And here comes the point where he'll trap the bubbles. So we'll come down here in case he winds up stripping some glass off into the bucket. He may strip it off in the furnace. But he's going to gather over that diamond pattern. And by putting the glass in there, turning in the pool of molten glass, he'll bring it out. And once it brings it out, you'll see the bubbles already forming. And there they are. Everywhere there's a diamond in that diamond pattern, there's now bubbles forming. So the brightness of the glass is a little bit much sometimes for this camera. So we'll back up just a little bit and see if we can get you a view of the bubbles forming. As the glass begins to cool closer to the pipe, you can start to see the bubbles. As Foster uses the block on the glass, the wooden cherry wood cup he has there, now you can really see the bubbles forming. So those bubbles are trapped in there now. They were created by the indentations made in the mold and then gathering over them, the air trapped bubble is in the indentation point. So now it's off to the races to make his vase. So, He'll take this and he'll shape it, blow it out some, lengthen it, and then he'll be putting a foot on it. After the foot, we'll do a transfer and finish the vase off. So this will be a beautiful aqua vase. The bubbles are established in it now. So now it's, his decoration is done. It's time to work the piece. He can use the barber now to cool the tip. Notice how he's pointing the glass downward. When he cools that end like that and then blows, it will not inflate as much there because hot glass moves and cold glass don't. Can double bubble layers be made? Uh, yes, you can do it. It would be very difficult probably, but it can be done. Uh, we'll be doing a demonstration on Facebook Live in another 20 minutes or so. That, uh, that program will last about two hours. And I think we're going to do a uh, paperweight in there that might have a couple layers of bubble in it. We'll see. Right now, Foster's cutting a jack line or a neckline. This will be the point for the piece to separate from the blowing iron. The newspaper acts to cool the bottom too. He could have used the marver or the back of a metal tool, but the wet newspaper does a perfect job. Now he inflates it. He's getting a nice spherical shape. Probably about 80% of the pieces we make are, are formed by making a sphere with a jack line in it, something we call a necked sphere, and then you change the shape of the sphere. If you want to make it a vase or a drinking glass or a pitcher, you just make it taller than it is wide. If you want to make it a bowl, you keep it short and squat. Right now he's cooling the bottom again on the marver so that when he does blow it out, it doesn't expand excessively there. That jack line or neckline is very important. That determines the sec uh, success of the break off. He's blowing it out a little more. And now we get a good view of that sphere with a jack line in it. 
So it actually overinflates it just a little bit because when he begins to elongate this by swinging it or letting gravity draw it downward, it will necessarily become narrower. So by inflating a little bit beyond what he wants for his finished diameter, he can now lengthen the vessel and end up at the right diameter for the finished product. By angling it down, it starts to fall from gravity, some gentle swings back and forth, and he treats us to his airplane propeller move. And you can see from the elongation that he did that very gradually. That was actually from my cheerleader days in high school. Oh, okay, so you were the drum major, huh? <laughs> A little more lengthening. Okay, so Frost will be coming out just to get a little more length to it. You'll see the hottest glass will be glowing orange or bright yellow. That's what will move. So as he turns the glass and moves it gently. Notice that he's not swinging real hard there. He's, he's stopped for just a moment. Held it level, checking the diameter, and then watching how long this gets. The, the longer he waits in the process, the more the glass cools. So when he first comes out of the glory hole, that's the reheating of it, the glass is at its most fluid. And that's when he takes it easy. Then as the glass cools off and gets stiffer, then he can be a little more energetic with it. He's using a pair of cardboard jacks. They're actually cardboard tubes. He calls them paper pegs. They don't take as much heat from the glass and they allow him to set the shape, cool it gently without stealing a lot of heat from the metal. Foster will now hand the piece off to Josh. And there's a good look at all those bubbles in there. You can see that when the piece is elongated, the bubbles actually stretch. Instead of being round and spherical, they become a little bit longer. Josh right now is flashing the piece. He's just giving it a little bit of heat to keep it well above a thousand degrees so it doesn't crack. When he sees that Foster's ready to come back for placement of the foot, he'll take a final flash and then meet Foster at the bench. So as Foster passes behind, Josh comes over and takes his place. He'll turn the piece upright so that Foster can drop the foot on the bottom of the vessel. Holds it upright, Foster will take his diamond shears, bring the piece up, drop his glass right on top, and snip it off. After he does that, Josh will keep it turning so it stays on center. Foster will grab what's known as a footboard, a pair of uh, boards, pieces of wood. One side has notches cut in it, and that's what he's using to surround the vessel and then squeeze real hard to thin out that dollop of glass. This is uh, going to give him a really nice knife edge and a sharp looking foot. It's not quite formed into the classical tapered shape yet. He'll come back to the bench after a reheat and do that. So in just a moment he'll be back here with us. He's going to use a specially made carbide tool to shape and flatten the foot. We'll get a good view of this here. He uses the squared up edge of it to kind of straighten things out, but then he'll turn it around and you can see that he has a taper built into it. And that's what gives him that beautiful curve coming down from the body of the vessel. He'll flatten it to make sure that it'll sit level. And then just as soon as he's done with that, we'll go for the transfer. So it's a handoff to Josh again for more flashing again. This is the glory hole over here that Josh is using. It's kept at about 2300 degrees and that warms the glass up pretty quickly. The furnace is held at about 2030 degrees. Foster's got his glass on the end of an iron. He's going to come back over to the marver and shape the putty. It's basically like a little glue bit. This is going to stick to the foot and he'll break the piece free from the blowing iron. So we'll watch the process. Foster has a file that he'll use to support the pipe close to the end where it's really hot. Touch the bottom of the foot, get it centered right in the middle of the piece. Then he'll go and scratch or score the neck. That 
helps it to break with a little tap of the file and it comes right off. And it's still moving around because that's a hot joint between the foot and the putty, but that's a good thing. We don't want the glass to get so cold that it's extremely stiff. Then it runs a chance of breaking, of fracturing. And you can see that the piece is actually moving a little bit on the putty. As soon as that starts to stabilize, he'll begin flashing the putty. He doesn't want that to lose heat either. Flashing is just a momentary heat, just in there for a few seconds, and then notice he brings it right back out. The end of that vessel where it was attached to the blowpipe was cold enough to fracture when he tapped it, so it takes a few moments to reheat. And in those few moments, I'm going to remind you again about our fundraiser, the Cats for Kids, a charity no kid hungry will benefit. The cats in the Maryland colors are $60 each, 50% goes to charity, so get your orders in. This is only for the month of March. After March, we won't be making them. They'll be signed and numbered. It's limited edition. All right, you can see the heat at the end of the glass. That's why it's orange out there. Foster uses the jack blades to open it up a little bit, and now he'll trim or shear the glass. So when it's hot like that, he's able to cut right through it like you would a sheet of cardboard. He'll use his jacks to round it out a little bit, and then he'll go take a reheat and begin working the vessel. Most all of our pieces are made by constructing the lower half to two-thirds while on the blowpipe. Then we transfer it to a punty iron and work the top half or top third of the vessel. So that's why Foster has pulled the piece back out of the heat a little bit and he's concentrating his heat right in the upper regions, up in about the top old oh, four inches of the piece. We're going to steam it out? Yes. Okay. So I asked him that so we know what to look for as far as tools. In addition to the cherry wood blocks, we have a steam cone. And it's simply a conical piece of solid cherry. Hello, Steve Ellis from England. Okay, and Bridget, yep, we saw Lynn, great. Okay, so now he's gonna take this wooden cone, which is always in water. Well, he'll get that in a minute. He's gonna straighten the lip and chill just a little bit. And now the cone goes in the water on the cone evaporates from the heat, creating steam and forcing it wide open. So you can see quite a bulge there created from the steam cone. Now he's going to open that up a little bit. He'll go back and take a reheat. And he's going to gradually get this to the point that this uh, lip area comes out pretty much straight. Then he'll use some centrifugal force to uh, ruffle it, or flare it out, and then ruffle it. If you've got any questions or comments, let us know. We're glad to have you here with us. And this is our kind of uh, appetizer for the day's activities, a quick uh, 20 to 30 minute demonstration of a piece. If you'd like to see more, we have a large variety of uh, bubble techniques, which we're going to be doing over on our Facebook Live page. Foster's now going to use jacks to open this up. You can see he's created a lot more flare there. And when he goes for the ruffle, the heat will be concentrated at about the top three inches of the piece where he's flared it out. He's opening the glory hole door because he's going to run out of room there if he stayed in that small one. And he's got one of those unique glory holes where that initial door is one single circle. And if your piece gets too big to pull it back out, it's just too late. You are out of luck. So now what he's going to do is use centrifugal force to flare it. You might be able to see the rim is opening up further and further. Apologize if it's too bright. Now he brings it out and by slowing the rotation and pointing downward, he controls the ruffles. Were he to spin fast, the ruffles would disappear and it would become flat like a top hat changing the angle and everything, and there we go. Beautiful. And the piece is still very, very hot. For those of you familiar with Fahrenheit 451, 
This glass is well over a thousand degrees anyway. We've made that point several times because it's really important to keep it at those temperatures or above to avoid cracking. But it's always a crowd pleaser to throw the paper in there and watch that burn up. Now, Foster's going to use a butter knife to chip around the putty joint. He's not trying to knock this off. Obviously, the only thing between the piece and the floor right now is nothing. So, he's chipping at it to cool it. Now he's going to put his gloved hand up in there with a little vibration on the pipe. Off it comes. And off to the annealer he goes. The annealing is the longest process in the glass blowing. It'll take about eight hours once this piece, once the annealer is brought down from temperature. So, let's hear it for Foster. Way to go, buddy. Real nice demonstration. Like to remind you, if you'd like to see more bubble pieces, check us out over on Facebook Live. Any parting words, sir? Thank you for being with us. We'll see you shortly. And, and see you then. All righty. Thank you. Bye-bye.